did they end up where they are in control of so much territory? Was that a complete surprise to you? Well, uh, I, I think uh, our head of uh, the intelligence community, uh, Jim Clapper, has acknowledged that I think they underestimated uh, what had been taking place in Syria. All right, folks, so you're familiar with that by now. Joining us now is General Michael Hayden, retired four-star general in the U.S. Air Force and former director of the CIA and the NSA. Hello, General. Hey, Steve. How are you today? I'm fine. I'm always honored when you join me here. Um, all right, so, so let me ask you this. Uh, there's a Government Accountability uh, Institute, GAI, uh, report, according to Breitbart, that says the president has attended only 42.1% of his daily intelligence briefings, his uh, PDBs, in the first 2079 days of his presidency through September 29th of this year. And uh, I, I mean, it, 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 that's insane, is it? Is it not? Well, as an intelligence professional, I'll respond with, well, that's a difference in style. And I look, I was President Obama's CIA chief for three weeks, waiting for Director Panetta to be confirmed. He had a different style than President Bush. President Bush learned and developed his ideas in the exchange, in the conversation. President Obama, just, just by personality and, and I think choice, prefers to learn in the reading and in the reflection. And so just naturally, you could tell early on, Steve, that President Obama just wasn't going to do those morning briefings the way President Bush did religiously six days a week. I mean, I can still remember days in the Oval. I can hear Marine One on the South Lawn chopping away, ready to go, and the president's just sitting there taking his intelligence briefing. So there, there's a difference in style. All presidents get to choose that. And then the intel guy has to accommodate to the president's style. But that style does make the system, the president and the intelligence guy, more vulnerable to what I think happened here. Yeah, and, and as a layman looking in general, uh, that's a more isolated style, is it not? So you're saying he got the reports and would read them, and then he would, you know, absorb the information that way and make decisions that way, as opposed to Bush, who would talk to everybody as he's reading it and ask questions and get answers. Am I correct? Well, let me tell you what I used to tell CIA briefers before they went in. You know, they'd come and huddle with me the night before, and I said, okay, have you done this before? No, sir. All right. Well, here's what you said, and I'd draw a little diagram for them. And, and then I'd say, now, what's your most important sentence? And they would start talking. I'd, whoa, 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 stop. Son, ma'am, you get one sentence before this president starts pushing back on you. <laughs> so make sure you get that one sentence out, because everything after that is an interactive exchange. And that's with Bush. It. That was with Bush. Yeah, that was with Bush. Yeah. And it's an interactive. Now, 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 like I said, these, all presidents get to choose, all right? And, and people like me have to accommodate. But here is the problem. Um, one of the great dangers, and it, it doesn't require anybody doing anything wrong, is, is that the intelligence, at least on the surface, seems to confirm the policymaker's wishes, and they get into this reinforcing loop. You know, an example is 150 years ago, General McClellan at, at Antietam thought Robert E. Lee had a much bigger army than he did, and his intel guy, Pinkerton, was telling him that it was so. They kind of reinforced one another. Um, they both believed it was true. We probably saw a little bit of that in the Iraqi WMD thing, where what we thought was true, the Iraqis had a program, was pretty much what the administration thought was true and wanted to hear. Right. I think what we have here is an example where the president's written intelligence reports could be read as reinforcing what it was he wanted to believe, right. which was so, these guys are still the JV and they're not as big a problem. Right. And since you didn't have the human exchange, you could never break that cycle. Right. So you see, you do see a danger in this style as opposed to the Bush style. Right. Right. Yeah. It, 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 it opens you up. It, it opens you up to, to look, if, if you're telling the policymaker things that make him happy, two things should happen. Number one, the intel guy should red team his conclusions. And number two, the policy guy should actually push back against the intel guy's reasoning just to make sure he really knows what he's talking about. That's a, that sounds absolutely correct. General, always great to talk to you, sir. Appreciate your insight. Thank you. Okay, Steve. Thank you. No. General Michael Hayden, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very interesting. And, uh, yeah, not surprising. Not surprising that the president would miss all those briefings.
based on his style, as the general said, and I say his personality. We're coming back. Don't go away.